live from the new sports betting capital of the world. You might be from Texas, but I'm from New Jersey. Benny Ricciardi is here to break down the day's betting board for you. Let's go, Go! Taking a first look at the day's bets, it's time for the FTN Betting Show. Welcome to the FTN BetsCast for Thursday, July 28th here at FTN Bets, sponsored by our good friends over at Sleeper. Sleeper is the fastest growing fantasy platform today with millions of players. And now you could win on Sleeper by playing in their new over-under game. It's super easy to play. So first, in any sport, you're going to choose two or more players that you like and pick whether they're going to go over or under their listed total. So, for example, tonight in baseball, it could be the number of hits, maybe the number of runs, could be the number of strikeouts that a pitcher has. Then you're going to choose an amount of money that you want to enter into the contest. And if you pick correctly, you can win anywhere from two times your money all the way up to 20 times your money if you go five out of five and get them all correct. But the main reason I'm excited about this over-under game on Sleeper, it's the only app where I can join with my buddies and we could all play together. It has a built-in group chat where I could see what you're playing, you could see what I'm playing, and we could all copy the guy who's won three days in a row. And it's insanely fun when everybody in the group chat is rooting for the same things to happen and sweating games out together. So stop what you're doing and download the Sleeper app now to play in that new over-under game. Have some fun with your friends and make a little bit of money in the process. On your mobile phone, you can join the listener group on Sleeper by going to sleeper.com backslash FTNBets. And Sleeper will automatically match your first deposit up to $100. Again, sleeper.com backslash FTN bets, and you'll get a $100 match on your first deposit. Terms and conditions do apply, so please see Sleeper's terms of use for those details. Today, we're going to continue with our team betting preview. We just finished up. Let's see. We did the AFC East. We did the NFC East. We did the AFC South. We did the NFC South. So now we're going to move on to the NFC North and talk about last year's NFC North defending champion, Green Bay Packers. Packers were 13 and four last year when they won the NFC North. Big change for them this year. No Devontae Adams. Number one wide receiver for Aaron Rodgers is gone out in Las Vegas right now. And they really didn't do anything big splashy to replace them. They brought in a couple rookies in the draft. So they did use a little bit of draft capital there. They brought in a veteran, like a guy like a Sammy Watkins, who may get into the mix. And they're going to be expecting some of the guys that they already have to just step up and take a bigger role. I mean, Devontae Adams had, what, 123 catches, I think, last year for over 1,500 yards, double-digit touchdowns. That's a lot of production now that needs to be replaced on this team. And I don't think it's going to be one guy that does it. I think it's going to have to be a committee approach because, again, I gave you the names of the people they brought in here, and none of those guys or even a a fraction of what Devontae Adams is. Now, with that being said, let's take a look at what we're looking at for the 2022 season out of this Green Bay Packers team. Jeff Ratcliffe, in his win total projections over on FTN Bets, has the Packers projected for 10.8 wins this year. They had 13 last year, so a little bit of a step back, which makes sense when you lose the number one receiver on your team and, you know, one of the top five guys in the league overall. Now, with that being said, there's a couple different numbers out there in the market. FanDuel has the low number of 10 and a half. It's juiced up, though. The over is minus 160 there. So that's a lot of juice to be paying for an over 10 and a half wins. 10 and a half is a lot of wins. If we, you guys remember last year when we talked about the playoffs, 10 wins get you into the playoffs. So they're saying that Green Bay has a chance to win 11 games or is going to have to win 11 games just to pay off a minus 160. So they are giving Green Bay a very good chance of getting 11, 12, 13 wins this season with that minus 160 price, but it's a little too rich for my blood there. The number is also available at 11 and a half wins, which again is going to be above Jeff Ratcliffe's 10.8 projection total here. So I don't really like that, but what I do like about it is it is paying us plus money for taking that risk there. So we would need them to get the 12 wins in order to cash an 11 and a half over plus 110 is the number there points bet and MGM both have it at that plus 110 at the 11 and a half win mark. Points bet also has the under on that 11 and a half wins at minus 130. So, you know, I think 11 is probably the right number here um, of wins, which is around what Jeff has at 10.8 here. DraftKings has this minus 110 to the over and the under right at that 11 win. So if they win 11, you get a push. You need 12 to pay it off. You know, if it's 10 or less, then you're going to lose that bet there. That's why I would rather just take the, uh, you know, take the, take the like, minus 160 on the over 10 and a half this way if they do get to 11 which again is still two wins less than they had last year probably the adjustment you would expect to be with no Devontae Adams 
you know, you're still going to wind up cashing a little bit there. So overall, I got to say, I think the number is pretty much where it should be, right? Like, again, the, the consensus number in the market is probably somewhere around 11 when you factor in the juice up and juice down of the 10 and a half and the 11 and a half there. So the number's probably around 11. That's the number we're projecting them for here, too. So I don't think there's really any value to the upside or the downside. I don't want to play the over, but I also don't want to play the under here either. I think this is a good number. I think this is a very good football team. I do think we see them make the playoffs. I just don't know if they're going to win 13, 14, 15 games and, you know, really absolutely blow by this. That to me is probably as much of an outlier as them winning only seven or eight games. The number should be somewhere around 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, somewhere in that range with 11 being the midpoint and the most likely. So let's talk about them to make the playoffs. You're not going to make a lot of money on, you know, your conviction that the Green Bay Packers are going to be a playoff team this year. Minus 450, best number out there in the market at BetMGM. It's minus 500 on most other books. So again, you are getting a little bit of a better price there. But at a minus 450 number, they're saying that like, you know, the, the Green Bay Packers have an implied chance of making the playoffs somewhere in like the 80, 85% range. So, I mean, do with that as you want. I don't think we make money taking minus 450s on things, even though I do think it's very likely that the Green Bay Packers will make the playoffs this year. The no on the Green Bay Packers, plus 370, Sugar House Bet Rivers' highest number there. It's plus 350 most other places. So, again, if you don't think the Packers are making the playoffs, you can get a little bit of extra money by going to Sugar House or Bet Rivers. I think that's a bad bet. I would not take them not to make the playoffs. Really, the only way I see them not making the playoffs is if Aaron Rodgers gets hurt. So that's really what you're betting on there is Aaron Rodgers getting hurt. Because otherwise, you know, I, I'm pretty sure they're going to – I mean, they have a very good chance to win a division. We'll talk about that in a little bit. And I do think this is going to wind up being a playoff team at worst case scenario. So I do not want to bet that. No. Again, do I think they're going to be as good as they were last year? I, I don't think they're going to be as good, but I don't think that the drop is going to be massive, right? Like I don't think this is going to be an eight and eight, 500 kind of, or actually eight and nine or nine and eight, 500 ish type team. I still think they're going to make the playoffs. I still think they're going to get double digit wins. Aaron Rodgers reigning MVP is still back there. He's still going to be doing what he does. They have a good running game. They have a solid defense. Like, there's still a lot of really good pieces on here. They just no longer have that elite number one wide receiver that other teams have to, you know, kind of game plan around. With that being said, best regular season record for the Green Bay Packers. You can get that at plus 700 on FanDuel, MGM, Unibet, Bet Rivers, and Sugar House. Again, 13 and 14 last year. Maybe they do improve on that this year. Like I said, everyone's kind of expecting them not to, but seven and one seems like a pretty good price to get. Most of the other teams that were, you know, up there like Kansas City and, um, well, Tampa didn't have that many, that many wins last year, but they were, you know, they were still a, a double digit win team too. Like, you know, a lot of those teams are at this price or below to be the, you know, the team that has the best regular season record. So 13 and four Green Bay Packers last year, plus 700 feels like value. Caesars has this at only plus 350. Now, again, Caesars is the outlier, right? Almost everybody else has it at that plus 700, but just the fact that they have it at 50% payout of what everybody else is getting. It's an interesting thing to see happen there. Let's see, to earn the number one seed, the Green Bay Packers to earn a number one seed, plus 500 on FanDuel and BetMGM. It's only plus 333 on Bet Rivers and Sugar House. So FanDuel, BetMGM, plus 500, best place to play them to earn the number one seed in the NFC. So here's an interesting thing, right? The number one seed in the NFC goes to the team with the best record in the NFC. The number one seed in the AFC goes to the team with the best record in the AFC. Nothing groundbreaking there. Everybody knows that, right? But when you look at the payouts here, best regular season record, plus 700. Best in the NFC, plus 500. So really, do you think the, what, maybe the Kansas City Chiefs? I doubt it's the Titans again, although I think they were the number one seed last year. But, you know, the Chiefs or the Buffalo Bills, like, do you think one of those teams is going to win more games than the Green Bay Packers? Maybe. Maybe they do, right? If they do, then you're better off taking the earn a number one seed in the NFC for plus 500. Now you only have to worry about teams like the Rams, who are defending champions, and, you know, Tampa Bay, who a lot of people expected to be in the championship last year. Um, you know, San Francisco 49. There's a couple other good teams a little bit below there as well that you got to worry about. I know the Eagles are getting a lot of hype this year and are, and are really moving up and, uh, you know, or should say moving down in some of the odds here, um, you know, getting to be a lower number, a, a lot more in the, uh, the elite range there. But really, I think I'd rather just play the um, best regular season record plus 700 over the earned number one seed for plus 500. You know, again, I don't think either one of them is a bad bet. I also don't think either one of them is something you should be mortgaging your house for. But I do think if you got a couple extra bucks or you want to throw some money in on something longer term, I do think it's a decent amount of money. to. I do think it's a decent bet to throw in, uh, earn the number one seed, or like I like better, best regular season record for the Green Bay Packers. Again, you can get both of those on FanDuel or BetMGM. 
plus 700 regular season record, plus 500 for the number one seed. Unibet, Bet Rivers, Sugar House also have that best regular season, plus 700. So let's talk about the chance for the Green Bay Packers to raise some trophies this year. And we'll start with the NFC North. They are the pro, not, not even prohibitive. They're a big favorite to win the NFC North here. Caesars has it at minus 164. BetMGM has it at minus 165. FanDuel has it at minus 170. The rest of the books are minus 180 to minus 190. So Caesars minus 164, the best place to play the Green Bay Packers to win the NFC North. And the Packers are a big favorite to win the NFC North. The only other team that really has a somewhat realistic chance here is the Minnesota Vikings, who are anywhere between, what are the Vikings out here, like plus 250 to plus 350 to win the NFC North which is giving them like a, you know, 30, 30-ish, 30-ish, 35%-ish chance to, the, to be the ones that win it there. So that's something that you could look at there. Um, you know, I do like the Green Bay Packers to win minus 164. It's not a great price, but I actually don't mind taking that. I think that's a pretty decent price that you can take. The Bears, actually the Lions are actually a slightly shorter price than the Bears to win the NFC North. They're plus 850 to plus 1,000. The Bears are plus 950 to plus 1400. So that's where those two teams are falling in that NFC North number there. Overall, to win the NFC, the Green Bay Packers are the number two team. They are the second shortest price to win the NFC. The shortest price, Tampa Bay Buccaneers, around 3, 350. Um, they're actually down a little bit with the from 350 to plus 300 to win the NFC. And that's after the signings of guys like uh, Kyle Rudolph and Julio Jones, you know, giving them a little bit more firepower there on that uh, offensive side of the football. The Green Bay Packers, the best price is plus 550 on Bet MGM. It's plus 500 on FanDuel and Caesars, plus 450 at the other books out there. So the plus 550 on BetMGM is a very good number for the Green Bay Packers here. I don't hate that at all. Green Bay to win the NFC, plus 550. Like I said, second shortest price. Well, technically, it's second or third. I mean, they're, depending on what book you're looking at, you can get the Rams between plus 500 and plus 600 too. So the Rams are shorter on some books. They're longer on some other books. It's just the way that it is right there. Um, San Francisco plus 750, Dallas plus 850 to 1,000, and Philly is plus 1,100. So that's where all those numbers are sitting there right now. And, um, you know, like I said, the Packers are plus 550, bet MGM, the place you want to go to get that. Super Bowl numbers for the Green Bay Packers. The Green Bay Packers are tied with the Chiefs for the number three shortest team. Again, a lot like the, the Rams in, uh, in the other division. The Rams, the Chiefs, and the Packers, depending on what book you're on, you could probably get all of them as low as 10 to 1 plus 1,000, and you could probably get them as high as 12 or 13 to 1, uh, you know, plus 1,200, plus 1,300 over there. The best price that I found on the Green Bay Packers, plus 1,200 on FanDuel and BetMGM. That is the best price you can get there. Like I said, they're plus 1,000, plus 1,100 on the other books, so plus 1,200, FanDuel, BetMGM. Number three overall team with the best chance to win the Super Bowl, the Green Bay Packers, right in line with, you know, Kansas City and the Rams. They're all kind of in that same range there. So there you go. That wraps it up for all the team stuff. Let's go on and talk about some of the individual player things here. Like, obviously, Devontae Adams leaving is going to affect a lot of things. It's going to open up a ton of targets for all the other guys in the team. It's also probably going to have a slightly negative effect on Aaron Rodgers, because when you have an elite receiver who you trust, like those two guys you know, had that trust and, and Devante is definitely an elite receiver. There's no arguing that whatsoever. You know, the guy had 123 catches last year, 1,500 and let me see if I get the exact number here, 1,553 yards and 11 touchdowns. Those are monster numbers that you have to replace. And again, I don't think one guy replaces it. Now, do they lean a little more on the run this year? Maybe, probably it, it would make sense for them to do that, especially if they're going to be winning you know, double digit games, right? You win in double digit games. You don't need to pass the ball as often as you, as you do. Now they did actually run the ball in those situations quite a bit last year too. So it's not like they didn't run a lot. I think they had two running backs that had 800 something plus yards um, with AJ Dillon and Aaron Jones guys that we'll talk about here in a minute, but we're going to start with the 2021 MVP, the reigning MVP, the guy who's going for another MVP award this year, Mr. Aaron Rodgers. 16 games last year, 4,115 yards passing, 37 touchdowns, four interceptions for Aaron Rodgers. The four interceptions is amazing, and that's what makes Aaron Rodgers so good. You look at his seasons, you know, all these big seasons that he has. Even Most of these other quarterbacks, they're throwing 10. Some of the bad ones, 12, 14, 15 interceptions. Aaron Rodgers throws like four. He throws five. He throws seven. You know, a bad year for Aaron Rodgers, he throws seven interceptions. Most guys would kill to have a year where they only threw seven interceptions. And that's kind of like the, the down year for Aaron Rodgers, 30, 30 touchdowns, seven interceptions. 
you know, again, guys would kill for those numbers. And that's like a down year for Aaron Rodgers. The guy is legit. A lot of people don't like his attitude. A lot of people don't like, you know, the way he presents himself. I don't really care. We're talking about football here, guys. We're talking about what he does on the field. On the field, this guy is arguably one of the best quarterbacks that we have seen. I'm 40 years old in my lifetime. He is one of the best quarterbacks that we have seen, and that's not even hyperbole. He's got the MVPs and all that to back it up as well. Aaron Rodgers is an absolute stud. MVP award for Aaron Rodgers for 2022. 10 to 1 is the lowest price you can get. DraftKings, points bet, Vandal, Caesars all have him at plus 1,000, 10 to 1 right there. So you can play it on any one of those sites. BetMGM is close. They're at plus 950 as well. But DraftKings, points bet, Vandal, Caesars for Aaron Rodgers, 10 to 1, plus 1,000 for him to repeat as the MVP of the NFL this year. Most passing yards. FanDuel has this at 25 to 1. It's as low as 14 to 1 on points bet. Not really one that I like to play here. Aaron Rodgers is not usually the guy that, that leads the league in passing yards. It's not that he can't do it, but it's just that if this team's going to win double-digit games, then they're probably going to be in a running situation at a lot in the end of a lot of these games. Last year, he only threw for 4,100 yards. The year before that, 4,800. Now, again, most guys would kill for 41, 4,800 yards, and I'm not saying it's bad, but you're going to have somebody. Last year, we had a couple guys throw for 5,000 plus. So if you want him to be the guy with the most passing yards in the league, you're probably looking at 5,000 plus is what he's going to need. And I don't see him throwing the ball more often or better or more efficiently without Devontae Adams than he did with Devontae Adams. So, you know, that's kind of the way that, uh, you know, that I'm looking at that altogether. I actually would rather play most passing touchdowns in the league because six of the last eight years that this guy was fully healthy and played 16 or more games, he's had at least 31 or more touchdown passes. Last year, he had 37. The year before that, he had 48 in 2020. So, to lead the league in touchdown passes, I think is more likely than him leading the league in passing yards. And you can get that at 16 to one on Fandle. So even the books think so too, because that's a smaller price than the most passing yards in the league for him. 16 to one plus 1600 on Fandle. Best number you can get here for most passing touchdowns for Aaron Rodgers. Just to give you guys a little idea, Caesars only has this at eight to one. So you're getting double the payout on Fandle that you would on Caesars for the exact same bet. Most passing touchdowns, Aaron Rodgers, 16 to one on Fandle. I like that a lot. That's one bet that I'm going to be putting in here. Passing yards for Aaron Rodgers this year. 3,950 is what FanDuel has it at. Minus 112 to the over and the under. That is the lowest number that I found out there in the market. So if you want to play an over on Aaron Rodgers passing yards, 3,950 on FanDuel is the lowest number that you could play an over at. Juiced up a little bit at minus 112, but nothing that's going to scare me away from it there. I like the over 3,950 passing yards. Remember, he threw for 4,100 and something last year in a season where the first game of the season he was trash and he missed one game during the season. And, um, you know, the rest of the season they wound up winning 13 games and were playing with a lead in a lot of those games where they didn't need to throw it that much. So that's why we saw his numbers take a little bit of a hit last year. Not a big hit. But if he would have played all 17 games, we probably would have been looking at like 44, 4,500 yards for him. And again, you know, they had a lot of big wins last year where they didn't need to throw the ball. Without Devontae Adams, maybe they do need to throw it a little more this year. They're projected for a few less wins. So some of those 200-yard, four-touchdown games for Aaron Rodgers might need to be 350, 400-yard, three or four-touchdown games for him this year, which is something else that can boast them up to the upside there. So Aaron Rodgers passing yards, 3,950. I like the over there at minus 112 on Fandle. DraftKings has it at 4,050 yards, 100 yards above that. MGM has it at 4,074 yards, so 125 yards above FanDuel. If you want to play an under, that would be the place to go on BetMGM at 4,074 yards, minus 115 to the under there. That's probably the best place to play it. Again, he threw for 4,100 and something last year, so he was over this while missing a game and still being in jeopardy mode the first game of the season that he played after coming to camp late. So I definitely think he can improve on those numbers, even without Devontae Adams this year, just because he's going to play more, he's going to get more opportunities. And if they're not winning games by as big a margin there, they might need him to do a little bit more in some of those games. So I do like the over more than I like the under. But if you are interested in the under, bet MGM. That's the place to play it. Minus 115, under 4,074 total yards. Remember, as long as he stays healthy, he probably gets over this. If he gets hurt and misses a game, he could probably still do it. If he misses three games, two games, three games, four games, then you're getting in very dicey territory. Any more than that, and there's no way he's going to get there unless he has a bunch of 500-yard passing games, which is very unlikely. So let's see. The last thing we'll talk about here is Aaron Rodgers' 
passing touchdowns. Again, I like the touchdowns more than I like the yards here. 31 is the number. Six of the last eight full seasons that he played, he's got 31 or more there. So I like to see that. Six of his last 10 seasons, including the two he got hurt, he's thrown for 31 or more there. So this is actually a pretty good number. Um, the over is slightly juiced at minus 115. Bet MGM is the best place to play that. It's minus 120 on DraftKings, so not much worse. But again, one fifth, minus 115 is the best price at Bet MGM if you want to do it there. Under 31 and a half passing touchdowns, plus 100, even money on DraftKings. So again, even DraftKings realizes that, you know, you know, this is, this is a guy who's probably going to throw for at least 27 to 35 touchdowns, somewhere in that range there. As long as he stays healthy, good chance that he makes it over. I like the over on Aaron Rodgers. I like the over on most passing touchdowns in the NFL, and I like the over on just straight up passing touchdowns at 31 and a half for him there. Those are the two bets that I'm really looking at taking for Aaron Rodgers. So let's talk about the running back situation here real quick. The running back situation is tough for me because, you know, this year, A.J. Dillon last year took on a bigger role. But it's not like that crushed Aaron Jones. Aaron Jones just took on a bigger role in a passing game and a slightly lesser role in the running game. This year, people are expecting him to take an even bigger step forward in the passing game and also take a small step back in the running game. Now, again, how big of a step forward in passing, how small of a step back in running? I don't know. And neither does anybody else out there. And that's why it makes it so tough to look at guys like Aaron Jones and A.J. Dillon, because I have no idea what the projections are going to be like for the number of touches each one of these guys get per game. I don't think the Green Bay Packers know. And I don't think the Green Bay Packers can know, even if they have an idea, because it's going to depend on how the games go, right? Like if you're winning the game by two or three scores, you're probably going to get more of A.J. Dillon busting it between the tackles. If they're down by a score or two, you're probably going to get more of Aaron Jones being out there catching passes and doing some running whenever the, uh, you know, whenever the defensive formation calls for him to do a run instead. So really, I mean, trying to project this is a very tough thing to do. We liked situations where, you know, things are the same all the time, like Derrick Henry, as long as Derrick Henry's healthy, Derrick Henry's going to get fed the ball and have his 15 to 20 touches a game, 15 to 20 carries a game. We know that. We know that this year. We know that last year. We know that three years ago. We know as long as Derrick Henry is the lead back in that Tennessee offense and he's healthy, he's going to get all the volume. We don't know exactly how the volume is going to break down here in Green Bay. A.J. Dillon could rush for 1,200 yards this year. I wouldn't be shocked. A.J. Dillon could rush for 600 yards, and Aaron Jones could have 1,500 total yards. I wouldn't be shocked about that either. What I would be shocked about is if both those things happen together because I think there's only so much to go around, and when you have two really good guys that are going to be splitting it, What's going to wind up happening, in my opinion, or what winds up happening most of the time in football is that both of these guys are going to do less than what their ceilings would be. And that's not good for fantasy. It's not good if you're betting overs on, uh, you know, season long props. And that's what really has me held up here. So as much as I like A.J. Dillon and I do have some A.J. Dillon in fantasy, I've been drafting him where I have, you know, his his ADP is starting to come down. But if you were in any of those early best ball drafts, you got him at a really good price there. You know, I, I, I don't want to. I don't want to take any bets on him. And the same thing with Aaron Jones, right? Like Aaron Jones is what? 1,300 total yards is uh, rushing and receiving yards combined. Minus 115 on DraftKings to the over and the under there, right? Do I really want to take that though? I mean, I, I don't think I do. And that's, you know, that's really where it comes down to is like last year he had 1,200. And he only played 15 games. So he was two games short. So, I mean, he probably averages around 1,300 if you, if you use those same numbers, but Again, then we're betting against him getting injured. We want him to stay healthy for all 17 games. We want to make sure that A.J. um, Dillon doesn't take too much of the, you know, the, the, you know, the, the work from Aaron Jones. And I can't guarantee that that's going to happen either. There are too many question marks to mess with these running back props. So I'm just avoiding them altogether. Like I said, my favorite one, if I had to take one, would be Aaron Jones over 1,300 rushing plus receiving yards. But really, I don't even love that that much. So I don't want to like give you guys that and put it in the back of your head where you bet it because I really don't think it's a lock. I think it's basically a coin flip. I think it's a good number. I think it's where it should be there. So let's move on and talk about the wide receivers. And there's not a lot to talk about here with the wide receivers. You do have 123 catch, 1,500 yard, 11 touchdown hole left by Devontae Adams that needs to be filled. It is not going to be filled by one person. You are not going to take the Devontae Adams stats and just put them on Alan Lazard and be like, well, Lazard's the new Devontae Adams right now. That's not the way this works. What's going to wind up happening is those, I forget what the number was, 150, 160, whatever, however many targets he saw come his way, are going to wind up getting split up. Maybe you get, you know, it's probably about an extra eight to 10 targets a game. So maybe two of them go to Aaron Jones, maybe two extra ones go to Alan Lazard. 
maybe one or two of them go to one of the new guys. They brought in two rookies, Dobbs and Watson. Um, you know, they got Sammy Watkins over there as well. So they got a new wide receiver as a veteran. Maybe they all get one or two targets as well. Maybe a little more goes to Tanya. And I don't know. And neither does anybody else. And that's what makes it so tough to look at the wide receivers here for the Green Bay Packers, because until we actually see the way that all this starts playing out right now, it's really just us projecting based on, you know, target shares and things like that on who's going to get a couple extra. Now, with that being said, there are certain things I can tell you. I do think Alan Lazard is going to get a bigger role. He has to, the, the balls have to go somewhere unless Sammy Watkins is going to be the wide receiver one and get the 150 targets that Devontae Adams saw last year. And I don't think anybody thinks that's going to happen. So really what you got to look at here is, okay, well, Alan Lazard last year had 40 catches, 513 yards, eight touchdowns, and he did it in 15 games, right? So, you know, you could probably add 10%, 15% to some of those 45 catches, you know, maybe 575, 600 yards, 10 touchdowns would have been if he would have played the whole 17 games, the 10 touchdowns, probably a little bit high, but again, this is a team that gets a lot of passing touchdowns, Aaron Rodgers, you know, 37, 48, the year before a whole bunch of seasons of 30 plus. This is definitely a team that does throw the ball. So maybe that is something nice for Lazard there. The year before he only played 10 games, he had 33 catches, 451 yards, three touchdowns. So again, if you would have made that 16 games, you'd probably be looking at about 45 catches, 500, 600 yards and three to five touchdowns. So when you look at his numbers for this year, I don't think they're really that far off considering that everybody's expecting him to also get at least, a, I don't know, 10 to 20% boost in targets and, and catches and you know receiving yards. And if you do, the numbers are kind of in line. So you have 750 is the receiving yardage number. Five and a half is the number of receiving touchdowns for Alan Lazard. 56.5 catches. And the catches is the one I like the most here. Because again, there's 123 catches last year that Devontae Adams had that are vacated. So they got to go somewhere. So where are they going to go? Again, I don't think all 123 go to Alan Lazard, but I don't think it's crazy to think he gets maybe 20% of that. So 20% of that would mean maybe another 20 something catches for him. He missed two games last year, had 40 already. He would only need 16 more catches. I think the over on the 56.5 catches is my favorite way to play Alan Lazard this year. The 750 yards. I like it. I think he goes over, but if he goes over, he's going to do it while getting that 60 plus catches. So I'd rather just play the catches there. And then the touchdowns, I, I, the touchdowns are variable, right? Like the year, Two years ago, he only had three in 10 games. So, all right, maybe he would add four or five if he played them all. Last year, he had eight and 15 games. But you know what? That doesn't mean he can't go out and only have one or two this year. And he could even have a really good year. He could catch 70 balls for 1,000 yards and only wind up in the end zone twice. And that's the problem I have with the touchdown thing is unless I can project a guy to go well over or well under the touchdown number that's being out there, I kind of avoid that. So if you're going to play an Alan Lazard number this year, which I am, the number I think you should be playing is 56 and a half catches. Play the over on the 56 and a half catches. That's my favorite, probably followed by the yards with the touchdowns being third. Not that I don't think he can't go over all three of those numbers on a good year. But again, you don't want to bet all three of them. You want to pick the one you like the most. And the one I like the most is going to be the Alan Lazard over 56 and a half catches. The other wide receivers, I don't think Watkins or Dobbs are going to end up. I mean, I mean uh, yeah, Christian Watson, sorry. I keep getting Watson and Watkins confused when you have to say that over and over Watson and Dobbs. I don't think are going to win offensive rookie of the year. You can get both of them at 20 to one or higher. Um, Sammy Watkins, I don't think is going to turn into the new Devontae Adams this year. And all of a sudden, like break, Sammy, Sammy Watkins has been a guy who's been supposed to break out for seven years at this point, And it never really happens here. I'm not saying that I don't think he'll be bad or that he won't have a role on this team, but let's not pretend that he's going to be a hundred catch thousand yard, 10 touchdown kind of guy. Like I, he's not going to step into that. I do think Alan Lazard is going to be the wide receiver one. That's why he's the guy I concentrated on here. Those other wide receivers, it's just, there's just too much out there that I can't explain. So I'm not even going to try to do it with any of them. I'm just going to stay away. And that is going to wrap it up for our preview of the Green Bay Packers here on the FTN Bets Guest, sponsored by Sleeper. Good luck today, everybody. Live from the new sports betting capital of the world. You might be from Texas, but I'm from New Jersey. 